So basically what I'm going to be doing is just, I've got about five or six of these little talks and they're maybe 10 minutes a piece. This one's like uh, nine slides, you know, I, it's going to take like 10 minutes to go through them. But what I thought I would do is I would start doing little microcontroller projects I've done and I would uh, encourage others to maybe do the same if they've got a little microcontroller project they did that uh, they could also present it. It doesn't have to be as elaborate as creating slides. You could just talk about it, what it does. So back in um, uh, 2008, I was uh, launching uh, lots of rockets. I'm gonna ask you guys, what's the significance of this background too at the end of the presentation? I'll see if anyone knows the significance of this uh, background. But anyway, so back in in the uh, mid uh, 2000, early 2000, mid 2000s, I got big time into uh, rocketry, uh, launching high power rockets. And uh, one of the challenges was uh, finding out the altitude that the rocket goes. So you could go out and buy these commercial altimeters. Uh, they were somewhat expensive at the time and being a cheap guy i wanted to build my own and i thought it would it'd be pretty cool to build my own so i needed something low cost that had to be light it had to be small because it had to fit into a rocket and uh, at, the, at that time most of these altimeters used uh, pressure sensors you know gps wasn't big back in those days and you know accelerometers were quite expensive because these days you've got the the uh, the altimeters that use um, accelerometers and they integrate the acceleration to, to to calculate speed and then distance traveled, and they can do it reasonably accurate. So uh, in the theory of this, if you look at pressure, the pressure at a fairly low altitude, you know, to you know five or six or seven miles uh, in the air, it's fairly linear the pressure versus altitude. So because it's linear, if you know the pressure, you can get your altitude. However, there's an issue, there's a problem we've got is that, you know, the pressure at the surface of the earth changes hour by hour, day by day, minute by minute. You've got a cold front going through, you've got various fronts and the pressure changes. So this line changes, it moves. So you can't, it's very difficult to get the absolute or, or get the, uh, the altitude above ground because it's changing. So you always have to um, look at, at getting the relative altitude. And that is you take the pressure, the current pressure at ground level. And then as the rocket goes up, you take the pressure reading at a certain altitude, you, you subtract the two and you use that to get the relative uh, pressure reading, and then you could get the uh, the, al the altitude. And in fact, that's how airplanes um, do it. You know, uh, old school, the old school al al altimeters had a little setting here at the side where you would set the uh, the altimeter, the pressure at the airport which you're uh, flying out of or arriving to. And I've got a little recording here. This is for an ATIS. It, this is an automated terminal information service. So at large uh, airports that have like a, a control tower, typically they'll have an ATIS and it's a frequency where they broadcast a whole bunch of information about the airport. And here, this is from Sudbury. I'm just gonna play a short little snippet of the, the ATIS from Sudbury where they call out uh, the, al the altimeter setting. Airport information Lima weather one seven zero zero zoom wind one five zero at five visibility two zero ceiling twenty two thousand broken temperature two 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 point five altimeter three zero two eight. So right there you said altimeter three zero two eight. So aircraft inbound set your altimeter three zero eight three zero two eight. And all of a sudden you're now calibrated for that airport. You're not going to tent peg into the ground. So the the, the altimeter, I bet this was very early in my, you know, um, building circuits and um, uh, building boards and stuff. And so the board I built, there was no cockroach, there was no ground plane. 
It was star wired grounds. If you look at the grounds, they're all like not not even star wired. It's like it's like a it's like a mess. So there's all kinds of ground loops and all kinds of issues. And if you look here, there's very little decoupling on the parts. There was on the um, pressure uh, sensor, which is shown here. This is the pressure sensor here, big sucker. And uh, I had a couple of uh, decoupling capacitors there for noise, but nothing on the um, uh, microcontroller. And it was a PIC 16F88 back in those days. I primarily used PIC. Um, I was a big uh, microchip microcontroller person. And even you look at some of the uh, um, uh, voltage dividers I've got here, there are no power decoupling on it whatsoever. So this was an early attempt and uh, you'll see later on that uh, it didn't work out very well. Software is quite simple. It's basically, uh, there's a, I've got a root routine here and basically what it does, it calculates the voltage and it subtracts it from a baseline. What's not shown here is when this microcontroller starts up, it uh, takes a whole bunch of samples of the, the current pressure at uh, the rocket when it's on the pad, just sitting there. So it, it's, it's got the baseline of what it is at ground level. So it knows the pressure at ground level. So when this routine is called, it uh, reads the current pressure, subtracts it, and then stores it in this thing called delta voltage. Right, and so uh, then, so what happens is that I take the delta voltage and I multiply it by a conversion factor to give me the altitude. I check the altitude if it's uh, over a threshold, like say my pre-launch, the reading is say five to 10, then I'll say the threshold to say 20. So once that threshold hits 20, I know the rocket has moved up a, a substantial amount of um, uh, uh, altitude. And in this case, with this specific thing here, it was uh, one count equals 30 feet. So this uh, uh, um, structure, it, it would, with that uh, value, it's set to 30. So each uh, delta count of the, the uh, ADC is equal to 30 feet. So once the uh, threshold is met, I say it's launched. So it starts recording. Uh, so every so often I've got an interrupt running, which is you can't see it. I didn't bother printing it, but there's an interrupt that sets this flag, this uh, safe sample flag. And uh, whenever that gets set, I write the value to the EEPROM. So it's it's fairly simple. It's, there's no, uh, as, as long as you understand what it's doing, this is fairly simple to go and uh, create this software. And if you look at the data from an actual launch, here's, I dumped out the, uh, as, as always too, if you look here, I've got a little routine here. And with all my microcontrollers, <clears throat> I've got a CLI. So and that allows me to go and control it and get data and set various parameters. So here you can, uh, the D command dumps out the data. So I just take that data, copy it, paste it in Excel, and I print it out. And that's giving me the altitude here. And so here, if you look um, down in this, uh, this is the settings I've got. This is telling that setting specifically there is telling me the baseline at, at, the, at the ground level, uh, the pressure reading was 30. So these values are uh, eight plus 30. So that's actually 38, but it subtracts the eight from it, right? So we're getting the Delta value. So I, uh, this was the actual board. And so I, I did all kinds of ways where I tested the, the altimeter. I put it in rockets, launched it, and writing the software and troubleshooting the hardware and doing that, it was a royal pain in the butt. I even used to take it up, up with me flying uh, just to check to see how it's working. And this, it was slow to develop the software. It was extremely slow and tedious until I figured out, I had this brainwave that why not use a Tupperware 
seal it, put the microcontroller in there, use a syringe and suck out the air of it and simulate um, the, the rocket going up in the air because the pressure decreases as you go up, right? So once I did this, uh, the development of software went so fast. So then in, in subsequent um, revisions of this, you could see all of a sudden the smoothing is, all, is the data is not as jumpy. If you go back here, look at how jumpy the data is. There's a lot of noise in that data. So here the data is a lot smoother. And uh, uh, these are two different versions, two different launches. And uh, now it, the interesting thing is you can see right here, it's, the, the curve is fairly smooth except for this point and except for that point. Does anyone know what happened? What's so special at that point in a rocket's flight? Yeah, I think I have an idea, Dave. Is that where the uh, where your parachute uh, pops out? Exactly. That's exactly it. So right there, the trick is you want the rocket the the um, rocket to break apart. The parachute comes out right at the top here, so you get the maximum altitude. Maybe a little bit after. So if you look at this, this is perfect. The rocket opened up just uh, after apogee, right? And here it opened at apogee. So this here, I didn't get quite the maximum altitude. It could have, who knows, it could have gone up a little bit more then started coming down. But uh, you could see the noise here is a lot lower. So that that's basically it. That's all I want to talk about. Does anyone know the significance of this, this picture in the background? Does anyone know what that what that is? The black brand. It is the black brand, but what else is significant about it? Churchill. Churchill, Manitoba. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what it is. 